I am Pam Stenzel, and I have the privilege of traveling all over talking to students about sexuality and relationships. I've had an opportunity in the last few years to speak in Uganda and Kenya and Cairo and London and Dublin and Switzerland and Mexico and Australia and, and, and all over the United States. And I have learned so much from the students that I've spoken to in these last few years. I hope that today you will learn something from me. More importantly, I would like to hear from you. And because of the sheer numbers of students I speak to, I don't always get a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one and answer your questions personally. And typically when I get done speaking, no one wants to be seen talking to the sex speaker. So if there was something that you wanted to talk to me about and you did not want anyone to see you or hear what you were having to say, the way to reach me is to go to the World Wide Web. You go to www.pamstenzel.com. Now on my website, there's a place you can email me. I answer my own email. Because that's true, it can take me about 10 to 14 days, so please be patient with me, but I will answer you. I don't want anyone to leave with questions that you really wish you could have asked and you did not know who to ask, so that's how you get a hold of me. Before I started traveling and speaking full-time, I spent nine years counseling in crisis pregnancy centers in Chicago and in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And for nine years, I would have girls in my office daily saying, Pam, I didn't know. If someone would have told me that this is what was going to happen to me, I would have made a different choice. No one told me. I began to ask these girls in my office, what could we have said? What could someone have said to you before you made your choice that might have helped you to have made a better choice? And after nine years, I realized that there were a lot of students out there making decisions about sex, having no idea, none, what the consequence of that choice would be. So we're going to talk about today. I want you to understand that I did not come to your school, to your town, to decide for you what you're going to do about sex. That's not why I'm here. I can't make this choice for you. Don't intend to. Can't go on your dates with you. I don't have time. Your parents can't choose for you, although I know there are some of you who wish they could. You know. I've been telling my own kids since they were four that when they turn 13, I'm putting them in a box, locking it and feeding them through a window till they're 19. <laughs> then my only girl turned 20. And I have now upped that to 24. <laughs> I mean, I would love to protect my own kids from the pain I have to look at every day. I cannot. All I can do is love them, tell them the truth, and hope they make good choices. My goal today isn't to decide for you what you're going to do, because you all can do whatever you want. My goal today is that no one would be able to leave this place and ever again have to say to a physician, to a counselor, to your future husband or wife, well, nobody told me. I didn't know. If you forget everything else I tell you today, and you can only remember one thing from me today, this is what I want you to hear. If you have sex outside of one permanent monogamous, and monogamy does not mean one at a time. <laughs> that means one partner who has only been with you. If you have sex outside of the context, you will pay. No one has ever had more than one partner and not paid. Today we're going to talk about the physical and the emotional consequences of sex outside of a monogamous relationship. Physical costs, you guys tell me. What do you think most teens who are having sex are afraid of? It's their biggest fear. Pregnancy is the biggest fear of teens having sex today. Doesn't make a bit of sense to me. Got a newsflash for you. Pregnancy is not a disease. It's survivable. You can actually live through it. I've lived through it three times now. A few extra pounds here and there. It hasn't killed me yet. I'd have girls in my office for pregnancy tests scared out of their mind. Waiting for the results of that test. I walk in, look at this girl, and say, your test is negative. Not pregnant. She gets this look of relief over her face like I'm off the hook, not pregnant. Thank you very much. Let me out of your office. Wait a minute. Have you been tested for syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, chlamydia, trichinomas, vavodymia, arthritis, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HPV, HIV? Have you been tested for that? Me? I live in Michigan. <laughs> Pam, I don't live in Indiana. <laughs> Sorry to those of you who live in Indiana. It's a beautiful state. <laughs> you mean I? I would need to be tested for that. This girl is in my office thinking she could be pregnant and she does not think she could have a disease. Astounding. Students, you have a four times greater risk of contracting a disease today than you ever have of being pregnant. Pregnant teenage girls in the United States today are carrying, on average, 2.3 sexually transmitted diseases. But they weren't worried about getting a disease, were they? Oh, no. They didn't want to get pregnant. 
Every high school I'm in, without exception, anywhere in this nation, every high school I'm in, I will have a girl write me, email me, or come right up to me and say this. Well, my mom found out I was having sex, and so she put me on the pill. Or depo, the shot, fill in the blank. What's that protecting that girl from? What does birth control protect you from? Pregnancy is what that protects you from. That drug, that hormone, that pill, that shot that this girl is taking has just made her 10 times more likely to contract a disease. And if she were not taking that drug, this girl could end up sterile or dead. Thanks, Mom. Glad you cared. Pregnancy, the worst thing that could happen if you decide to have sex today? No way. Far, far worse things than that. However, over nine years, I have had to tell a lot of young girls that their test was positive. Immediately, they want an easy, painless way out of this pregnancy they didn't plan. And I have to look at this little girl and say, guess what, sweetheart? Your choices, your choices at this point are bad, terrible, and even worse. Those are your options. You had a good choice. That was before you had sex. Now all the choices you got are going to carry lifelong consequences. No easy way out of a pregnancy you didn't plan. Abortion is painful. I've counseled hundreds of women, 5, 10, 15 years after an abortion, still hurting. I've counseled teenage girls with anorexia, bulimia, depression, suicide, because of an abortion they couldn't take back. That's not like going to the dentist and getting your tooth pulled. There are consequences lifelong to that choice. Parenting is not an easy choice. I was in a middle school in Ohio recently, met a seventh grade girl, 12 years old, pregnant with twins, delivered recently. Be a lot of difficult years ahead for this eighth grader. Girls, listen carefully to me today. Girls, 80% of teenage girls who choose to parent children while they're teens will live below the poverty level for at least 10 years, most of them for the rest of their lives. And that's not just that girl living in poverty, that's her child. And 90% of teen girls who choose to parent children today, 9 out of 10 will never attend or graduate from college. 90%. And 10 out of 10 of those girls sat in my office and said, well, not me. See, kids, I'm going to finish high school, work full time, go to college, be a doctor. Yeah, whatever. Life happens. The number one indicator of poverty in the United States today, and we have poverty in this country. When I was in Kenya, the students in East Africa were like, What? Poverty in the United States of America is the wealthiest nation in the world. You don't have poverty in your country. Yes, we do. And the number one indicator of poverty in my country today has nothing to do with race or where you live. The number one indicator of poverty in the United States today is single parent households in the age of that young girl when she began parenting. Teen moms. That is the indicator of poverty in our country today. Serious responsibility, girls. This is not a game. This is not a new puppy. This isn't someone to love you. Boys, in case you've all fallen asleep now because we're talking about pregnancy and this clearly does not involve you. <laughs> Young men, you get a girl pregnant in the lovely state of Michigan or anywhere in the United States of America. If you are in one of these states, the 50 states, you get a girl pregnant that you are not legally married to. Not who you like a whole lot, that does not count. Okay, boys, you get a girl pregnant you're not married to, and you need to understand, young men, that you have absolutely no legal right to the choice she makes. This girl can decide to do whatever she wants. You have no say, and suing her for stealing your sperm might prove to be a bit difficult. You could try. If, however, boys, if this girl decides to parent your child, if that's a decision she makes about her pregnancy, she's going to keep the baby, boys, you now have legal responsibility. It's costing us about $30 billion a year to support teenage girls parenting their children. We can't pay this bill. Over the last 10 years, we've undergone welfare reform. The laws have all changed. Boys, I don't care what your older brother, some uncle, or your cousin got away with. It's not happening for you. We are now requiring in all 50 states the social security numbers of both parents on every birth certificate of every child born in this nation. Girls will no longer be allowed to say... I don't know who the dad is. 